In today's session, we will be covering a lot of topics about how to manage documents more effectively. Here is the agenda. Office 365 is now called Microsoft 365 for a reason because it's not just the apps. It comes with security and compliance also built in. And that's important from, so what is Microsoft 365? First of all, it caters to our common needs like creating files and storing them. This is what we will be talking about today. More about managing and storing files. And then of course we work, execute a lot of projects, collaborate with each other, analyze data and try to automate. So for all these components, I am sure you have seen this slide if you have attended any of my session before. But today we are going to focus on the storage part and the create part because every day we are creating lots of files. Where do we store them? How do we manage them? Because even if you create the file, lifelong it is not going to just stay with you. Imagine if you create a file, store it somewhere and never show it to anybody else, only for yourself. How many such files do you have? Personal files, that's a separate issue. But in a corporate context, there is nothing like my file. It is always a file which you may create, but at some point of time in the life cycle, you will need to involve someone else, either for getting some inputs or for clarifications, approving, or even after publishing the files, some people may be referring to it. Bottom line, there is nothing like my documents in corporate world. Yes, you are creating files, you should control who can have access to it. But from a corporate point of view, that's corporate or business data. I have noticed that many customers store videos on file system. And that's a really, really wrong thing to do. This is not a wrong thing we are doing yesterday or today. This is something which has been happening for three decades. Earlier, we had files, local storage server storage. We had no other place. So we used to put videos on local drive or some server share. Fine, no alternative. Then cloud came. Again, we can put files on cloud. In this context, OneDrive, SharePoint, Lists, Teams, all those are cloud applications. So we keep videos also nowadays on OneDrive and SharePoint and things like that. Teams also. That is also wrong because all these are designed to store files. So first important clarification is all files are equal except videos and videos require special treatment and we have a special app for that. It's a part of Office 365. You don't pay anything extra. So if you go to Office 365 all apps, you will see stream. This is for videos type of files only, audio or video, okay. Now the idea is why am I saying don't put files on SharePoint or Teams or OneDrive or local drive or file share, file server, nowhere, only stream. Why is that important? Very important concept to understand because many people have stream as a part of Office 365, but hardly any customer I've known who actually understands the importance of it and actually puts all the files there. The important part is why you should not store videos on file system. That is the first thing you must understand. Why is that important? Because there is a disadvantage if you store video like any other file. Any other file, I mean what? Like, uh, what do I call it? Like, uh, Word or Excel or PowerPoint file, video file is not like that. And why is it not like that? Let me explain. And what are the disadvantages of doing that? So the problem with video files is video files, we don't scroll and see like a spreadsheet or a PowerPoint or something like that. So why not store videos here is because if you store videos there, if someone was wants to watch a video and maybe it's a 20 minute video, you don't watch the entire 20 minutes. It may be a recording, it may be a training program, it may be a long video. Now, if you start 
it has to download the whole file first and then start playing. That's a bad idea because I may not see the whole file at all. So that is why if you use file system to store videos, it wastes lot of bandwidth and there is a delay. So users also don't benefit, IT also doesn't benefit. Both ways it is bad. Other problem is formats. If someone has taken the video on an iPhone, it's not going to run on Windows. Now, who is going to do that conversion? You don't want to bother about it. So, all that are problems. Fast forward, rewind, waste further bandwidth. And if bandwidth goes down, then you will not even see the video properly. It will just stop, stop, stop and play or audio will get jerky, all that. So, all these problems are solved if you put videos on stream. So, what is special about stream? Well, it understands all kinds of video formats. So, any of these formats you upload, absolutely no problem, stream will manage. Now, when someone is running the video which is already on stream, you don't need to worry about which file format, what kind of conversion, nothing of that sort. All that is managed by stream. So, already you are getting benefits. So, you may have an LMS, you may have training videos, safety videos, product demo videos, support or repair related videos, manufacturing related videos, all of them, wherever they are, move them to stream. Now, it is not just because of this. If the bandwidth goes down, what happens? Stream will automatically understand that bandwidth has gone down. It will automatically downgrade the quality of video, but it will still keep it running and audio will not break as much as possible. So, like YouTube does, this is like a corporate YouTube for you. Remember, all videos on stream are corporate data. So, they are only viewable by your staff, people who have access to Office 365. Your partners, customers, those videos you cannot put on stream because you simply cannot share them outside as of now. So, that's important. Now, there are other benefits also. What you should do is, assuming the language in which someone is speaking in the video is English, as soon as you upload a video, one extra step you have to take. So, let me actually show you how this works. You go to stream, you will have a lot of videos there. Assume you have already uploaded it. One extra thing you have to do. So, assume I have uh, uploaded a video and I go there after upload and then look at edit, right? You have to up update video details and here you have to set the language if it is not set to English. Why is that important? Because if you set the language to English, notice I change the language, auto generate captions is disabled. If I change it to English, auto generate captions happens. It's a very, very powerful facility. Why is that important? Assume you have a one hour long training video and you want to make sure everyone watches it. Okay, everyone underwent the training online. They watch the video. Later on, they have a question. Then they know that answer is there somewhere in the one hour video, but exactly where problem. So, everything which is audio in the video is automatically converted to text and that text is visible to you as a transcript. And in order to make that transcript, which is called auto generate captions, this only happens if you set the language. That is why I'm saying set the language. And then what happens? That transcript will be shown next to the video. As the video plays, the transcript will scroll automatically. Of course, you can enable CC like closed captions on top of the video as well. But here we have separate pane also. What is the benefit of this? The closed captions get superimposed on the video. You have no control over them. You are either on or off. Here you can search. So if I have seen this video and I want to search, this is a one hour, 10 minute video. I can search where is the word analysis coming, then it will show me all the places. I click on this, it will jump to 47 minutes, 3 seconds. That is the benefit. So, please use stream for videos. Currently, these languages are supported. So, for all practical purposes, English is what we should have. So, that is about videos. Now, let us come back to files and we will come back to our base diagram. Right? There is one more new data type which has come, word 
word processing documents, spreadsheets, presentations, notes. This is web pages. So they automatically get stored on the cloud. You don't have to save them separately. Forms also automatically get saved on the cloud. You don't have to save them separately. Whiteboard also gets directly stored on cloud and also integrates with Teams. No separate save as is required. Visio is a new one. Many of you may not have noticed that there is Visio now as a part of Office 365. So if you go to Office 365, Earlier, Visio was a separate product. You had to pay for it separately. Even now, there is a paid version, but a light version, a free version is now included as a part of Office 365. So this is a new, very, very useful type of file. You can create diagrams, flowcharts, networks, and so on and so forth. So let's see how to create a network diagram, for example. Now, Maybe you are currently creating flowcharts and diagrams using Word, Excel, PowerPoint shapes. Those are not very sophisticated. This is designed for it. So notice we have a PC, there's a ready-made image for it. And then that PC is connected to, let's say, whatever. So different types of icons are available. So these are computers and monitors kind of icon. These are networking kind of icons. You see this? We have a projector, we have a copier, scanner, all kinds of things. So let's say a plotter is attached to this. How do I attach it? Not like this. You go here and notice here. And then you can choose whatever you want next to it. Very, very useful. All these are beautifully created. You can quickly change colors, themes, all kinds of things you can do very, very instantly. You can't do this in PowerPoint. And the files are stored on cloud as well as locally. So here, when you say file save as, what is the file type? VSDX, like PPTX, XLSX, VSDX. Right now, this works on browser only. There is no desktop app. So anyway, it's going to get saved in your OneDrive. Okay, so that's about Visio. Now let's talk generally about files. Files are a very important part of collaboration because very often we create files, we need to send it to people. Now, there are two ways of interacting with people in the context of files. What kind of context we are talking about? We need to talk to people, get their inputs. So you may be creating the file, but others have to contribute to the file. That's a very, very common requirement. And traditionally, we are where do we store documents? Well, I don't want to waste time and do a poll right now, but I'm sure if I ask you a question, are at least some files stored on local drive first? New files I'm talking about. Old files we will not worry about right now. Old files we will see later. New files which you create today, what are the chances that those files many people are still storing on the local drive and the chances are very high? Correct me if I'm wrong. You can keep responding to me also on the Q&A panel. We can also use it like a chat, no problem. So whatever thoughts you have, whatever comments you have, questions you have, keep putting it on chat. That makes it easier for me to understand how you are relating to what I'm saying and I can change my context very quickly. So typically, even today, people have still not understood that the worst place to store their files is local drive. In fact, even today, the most popular place is desktop, which is a really bad place. Even if you decide to store it on local drive, please don't store on desktop because it has limited space. It becomes like a dumping ground. You can't even read the file name here properly because it's thumbnail view. So it's a bad idea. But in general, if you store files on local drive, Many people do it just because they're used to it, number one. Second, nobody told them an alternative, which is much, much better. So we just are habituated. But what are the problems? I'm not going to show you anything new. All these problems, you know. Disk fails. Yes, nowadays disks are better, more powerful, more resilient. Failure has gone down. Agreed. But still, randomly it can fail. Or someone can steal your PC for that matter. Or... Nobody is stealing your PC, disk is fine, but you created a file, you stored it on your local machine, laptop, PC, whatever, Mac, 
Afterwards, you switched it off and went home. Or you are at home only, but you switched it off. Then what happens? Others can't access the file. Or if you go to another location, you also can't access your file. So that's what I mean. Stuck to the device on which it is stored. But these two are not major problems because most of us use laptops. So no problem. But still, this is the biggest problem. The problem is I need to input, get inputs from other people. So I have no choice but to send the file to people as a copy. How many copies am I going to send? Well, depends on how many num number of people I have to manage. Correct? So what am I going to do? I am going to store. I am going to store the file somewhere and then send it to people. Two methods basically. Two methods of sending file to people. Email or chat. Let's talk about email first. We attach the file, send it to people. Hopefully they will reply with changes. Now assume this was a Word document. Do you know how many times you have to copy paste? No, not four, not five. The answer is I don't know. Even if it is my file because I don't know how many changes each one has done. Those many changes I have to copy paste. It's a very bad idea. You are wasting your precious time. Even if you get salary for this, is it a good use of our brain? No. It's, yes, this was happening for many years. There was no alternative. That's okay. But now there is. So this is huge waste of time and energy. So we have to stop doing it. And anyway, even if you do this copy paste, it's not enough. One more round, one more round, one more round. And then 27 copies are floating around. Nobody has a clue where is the latest one. And after the final one is really finalized, you still send one more copy just for reference. It's a disaster. Too many copies, confusion, time wastage. From every angle, this is bad. So we have to solve this problem. What is the problem? Problem is files are getting into copies. Because why? We are sending copies. Obviously, they will get created. We are not the root cause. We don't have an alternative. That's why despite knowing it is wrong or inefficient, we are doing it. So stop doing it first. Think, can I keep the file in one place? That place cannot be my local drive, by the way. Why? Because if I shut off my laptop, others can't access it. I want their inputs, but I don't want to make a copy. So that has to be a central place. That file share, which we used to use in departments, that is also not good. Because if one person is editing, other person can't edit. We want a place which is safe, but it is always on. And that place which is safe and always on, and you can store your files there. You store a file, you create one copy. And lifelong, you never have to make a copy of it because you are not going to send it to people. People are going to come to the file. That is one drive for business. Any cloud application, any cloud storage, obviously has the same benefit. Now OneDrive also comes in two flavors, free version and paid version. Why is OneDrive for business called OneDrive for business? This is important to understand because there is no point in telling you benefits of OneDrive if you have some apprehension, resistance or some concern about where is my data going, who can see it. So first, who can see a file on your OneDrive? Only you, one person, whoever created the file can see it. OneDrive means each person gets one terabyte of space or more, depending on the license. One place, one person. One person, which is you, can see the file. That's it. Now, unless you share the file with someone, they cannot see it. Even if you share it with someone, you can stop sharing whenever you feel like. So you are in control, remember. Now also remember, this is corporate data. This is not your personal file. So if corporate compliance team or legal team or IT team needs to see your file for some specific reason, they can obviously see it. The commonest example is one person is changing department. Someone is getting transferred from HR to finance. Now HR files are there. I am going to be replaced by another person who will take my job in HR, my original position. Now those files should be given to that person. Obviously, all that can be controlled by IT. Or if someone leaves, then what happens? 
new person has to have continuity they have to have the sales proposals they have to have the budget data so that also can be done so for such exceptions it can take control and do it but for all practical purposes on a daily basis if you store a file on one drive only you can see it end of story so now let's go further now what we want to do is how to store why to store we will see later but then safety whenever you put data on cloud who has seen cloud where is my data what about the engineer sitting there that also is a concern so remember if your data is stolen or leaked or someone hacks it and sells it in the open market what happens you know data is very precious and files are also part of data and you should absolutely be worried about it very good thought so important thing to understand is what happens if your data is leaked or misused by someone you know but i am just going to give you the overall picture of what happens when data leakage happens because it has business impact negative business impact obviously so what kind of business impact are we talking about if data leaks depending on what kind of data how much data is leaked and all of that different kinds of impact can happen to you but then apart from the business impact there is also compliance requirement remember compliance requirements are also there so you are of course going to have one or more of these problems as a part of data leakage so you should be worried about it and then think about it when you put your data on microsoft platform which is that is microsoft's business you are microsoft's customer so if your data is leaked from microsoft server don't you think the same rules and regulations and compliance requirements apply to microsoft as well now of course you are worried about your organization's data but microsoft is managing data of millions of customers don't you think they must be equally or much much more worried so that is why you must understand that whatever risk you have million times more risk microsoft has of your data being misused or lost or leaked why am i saying that now think about your company you must be from some industry you have some regulations you have some rules you have some compliance requirement government has your industry has some standards are there you have to follow for your or your type of business think of all those requirements whatever number of things you have to comply with now think of microsoft microsoft is not working in a single industry their customers are across industries their customers are across countries their customers are across various types of regulatory borders so these are the different types of rules regulations standards and compliance requirements which apply to microsoft cloud definitely these many you don't have to apply microsoft is applying all global standards required all us government standards all types of industry standards so financial healthcare defense retail whatever it is all of them and regional standards wherever in every country has a clear cut set of compliance requirements and of course this is not a list static every day something new is happening existing regulations keep changing and it's a very very complex job to manage this so what happens is this data is much more safer than if you had applied only the regulations which apply to your industry that is what i am trying to tell you it's by just putting a file there it's super safe you don't have to take my word for it you can go to this thing called service trust portal shesham will post a link of that so that you can go and see it later you can log in there and you can actually see which type of cloud service you are using onedrive sharepoint whatever office 365 azure which industry you are from and it will give you a list of all the audit reports where does this audit come from all these logos are not just icons or pictures there is an association there are rules and regulations and representatives of those associations or external auditors are coming and checking every whatever period there is monthly weekly quarterly depending on the frequency yearly is this complying 
with our requirements. So all those audit reports are also visible to you. You may not be interested in all this, but it is very important to make sure you show this to your legal compliance and risk team and top management because effective use of files using cloud has to be done by everyone, including the senior management. If only senior management uses it properly, people down the line will use it properly. That's why everyone has to be convinced about its safety. So that's about the safety part. Now let's talk about the benefits of storing files on OneDrive. So idea is when do you store a file on OneDrive? And that is a very simple answer. All new files you must store on OneDrive unless there is a specific reason. We will come to that reason later. All files, OneDrive. All new files at least. Yes, when you got OneDrive, you may have a lot of old files on your hard disk. Don't be in a hurry to put all of them there. It will take too long and it is of no real immediate benefit. But yes, from the old files, think which are the files I am currently using. Move those folders to OneDrive. Never copy a file from local drive to OneDrive. I will tell you why later, but remember this. Always move local files to OneDrive. I will explain why a little later. Always move to OneDrive or SharePoint or Teams. Never copy. Okay, but now saying this is okay. Why will people do it? Another way of saying it is never click on this button. This PC. File save as never on this PC. Always on OneDrive. A simpler, more graphical way of saying the same thing. But why? Let's understand that very quickly. The next 10 minutes... I am going to show you why this is very, very important. So I am going to create a new file now in front of you and show you the entire document lifecycle. I am going to create a long file because we want uh, not just a blank document. So this is a long document, 119 pages. It's a template, but I have not saved it yet. So I go to file, save as. This is the critical moment. As I said, never click here, always click here and then Say demo Southeast Asia. Okay, done. Save. Now what happens? Very good. File is saved to OneDrive. Isn't it? Am I right? File is saved to OneDrive. Where is OneDrive? Microsoft Cloud. No, that is absolutely wrong. Yes, I did click on OneDrive, but the file first gets stored on local drive. So this is the file. This is my local drive, C colon, whatever, whatever. If the file first gets stored on local drive and this icon indicates that the file is now getting synced. It is going to take it because the file is currently open. The sync will continue. It doesn't take so long. Bottom line, first the file is stored locally and then it goes to cloud. This icon means it is getting synced. Okay, so far so good. But file is local drive, also on OneDrive. Means what? Now, at this stage, once the file is synced, how will it look? It will look like this. How will it look? Let me just quickly show you. Once the file is synced, it will look like this with a green tick mark. What does that mean? The file is there on the local drive as well as on cloud. Once this tick mark comes, you can switch off your laptop, go wherever you want. You can access that file from anywhere. Any machine in the world, not even Windows, any machine with a PC or whatever, a browser and an internet connection. You just log in as you, your OneDrive files will be on OneDrive on cloud. As simple as that. Now if local file gets corrupted or uh, hard disk fails, whatever, buy a new hard disk, log in, all the files will be synced back. So what did you get? Automatic backup and automatic restore. Very good. So let's go through these benefits one by one. Auto sync, that is what we just saw. But then there is a problem. Suppose you have a very large project going on and this particular thing has a lot of files in it. And this is a project and call it demo. Now this file, lots of files are there and it's copied occupying a lot of space on my hard disk. They are synced. 
Now, after two months, the project is over. Now, I don't want those files to occupy space on my local drive. Of course, I don't want to delete them. On one drive, we have one terabyte of space. My local hard disk is small. So, I want the copies on cloud, but don't want locally. So, remember, if you delete a file, it will get deleted from local drive and from one drive. Remember, local drive and one drive, both places it will get deleted. If it has already synced to multiple other devices, these, those instances will also be deleted. So, if you delete a file by mistake, what do you do? On the PC, you will find it in normal recycle bin. Same way, if you go to Office 365, browser, OneDrive, what does OneDrive have? It has its own recycle bin, which is nothing to do with your local desktop. So, there also you will find it for 90 days. If you wake up after 90 days, then yes, there is another admin level recycle bin also. Talk to IT, they will recover. Now, IT also 90 days. You came to know after 180 days, then you can log a call to Microsoft, they will try to help you. Bottom line, accidental deletion is not a problem. Done. Now, okay. So, what I want is this folder, which has a lot of space locally occupied. I don't want it to occupy space, but I want to keep it on cloud only. So, what do you do? You right click on it. And if it is Windows 11, it will look like this. If it is Windows 10, it will look like this. In either case, you will have an option called free up space free up space. The same menu looks like this here. So, if I go to the document, right click document or folder, same concept, free up space. What does that do? Well, let's see. So, let's do it for a file so you'll understand better. This file is already synced, so I have a copy here and I have a copy on cloud. Now, when I say free up space, see what happens. It just becomes a cloud icon. What does that mean? It didn't just change the icon. It actually removed the file from local drive. So, it's not occupying any space on local drive. But the file name remains. The thumbnail will remain. It will be available for searching also. But it is not locally occupying space. So, it's like a shortcut. When you double click on the file, it will understand, oh, the file is only on cloud. It will get the file and allow you to open it. So, that is important. Now, this file of ours, which we just created, when I close the file, it will have a tick mark like this. So, let me show you that. Many people get confused with this. That's why I'm showing it to you. I close this file. My job is done. Now, it became green tick mark. What is the difference between this green tick mark file and this cloud icon file? This green tick mark file, I have a local drive version of it which means I can edit it offline as well. <coughs> what does that mean? All the benefits of whatever you are used to for 30 years of storing the file on local drive are absolutely available to you even now. So, you are not missing or losing anything. You are getting more. So, AutoSync we just saw. The difference is when we go to this file with the cloud icon, now, if you are in an area with no internet connection and now you double click on that file, because it's cloud only, this one to download will require internet connection, whereas this kind of file or this kind of file, any tick mark file will be available locally. That is all you need to understand. Now, sometimes what happens, I know this file folder is on right now on cloud, for example, right? A particular folder is on cloud right now. Let me make it a cloud folder. And now I know that I'm going to go somewhere where there is no internet connection, but I need those files there. Right now I have internet connection. So now you can't think of it then. So now before you go, what do you want to do? You want to download. But if it was one file, you could have double clicked. But then that's 100 files inside. You don't want to double click 100 files. So what do you do? You right click on the file or the folder and say always keep on this device. What does that mean? It's going to actually download all the folder and file, whatever you selected. And then a local copy is there now. 
So now notice the demo folder has a white tick mark. White tick mark means what? You have consciously said always keep on this. And the green tick mark means what? This file was stored locally and got synced. In either case, there is a local copy. That is what is important. Now, why is there a red cross here? Because some file must have some problem because of which it did not get synced. Now, don't search for problems like this. At the bottom, there is a OneDrive icon, right? OneDrive icon. OneDrive icon, taskbar OneDrive icon. In that OneDrive icon, if you click on it, that is the fastest way of checking where the error is. Remember this, when there is an error, don't because there can be hundreds of folders and files. Where will you go and search? Don't do that. So what do you do then? I want to know why there is a red mark. Yes, good question. So what you should do is go and look at OneDrive icon and click it. Now what happens? It will show you something like this. There is a sync issue. Click on this. Then it will tell you which files have a problem and then it will tell you what to do about it to resolve it. That is how you manage that red thing. Okay, so far so good. Now let's talk about what else we can do. Now, many times we open a file, edit it and forget to save it and then it gets corrupted. That is not going to happen now for another reason, new feature auto save. Auto save means what? Exactly what? Well, let me show you. Now, this is a file. I am editing it in front of you. Look at the top left corner. I am going to actually type something here. Actually, I am not going to type. I am just making this bold. See what happened? It is saying saving. I did not say save. That is called auto save. Every small little change you do gets auto save. All good. What is the benefit? Even if now machine hangs or something happens, you will not have corrupt files. Maybe last couple of seconds, whatever you did, you may miss. So that is another benefit. Very, very useful. Zero file corruption. Auto save. You don't have to enable it. It is always on. Only if the file is on OneDrive, SharePoint or Teams. Same concept. Good. So auto save is done. Now, another one. I am going to change this file. I am going to change this file. Can I undo it? Yes, of course. It is a word. No, so you can undo. But suppose I delete something and uh, this whole thing I'll delete and then I close the file and then I open it. Then what happens? Now undo is not going to work. Now how do I get it back? Don't worry. You see this? I never said save as version 1, version 2. I created this file few minutes back, but it keeps storing versions whenever you make changes. So here are the changes. I say restore. Okay. Now this was the latest file, so it had only one version. If I open some file which is which I have been editing for a long time, it will have lots of versions. You don't have to worry about the versions. Up to 500 versions for each file are stored. When 501st version is required, the oldest version is deleted. Each copy of file has some disk space, right? So I have a 10 MB file. If I have 10 versions, is it going to occupy 100 MB in my OneDrive? No. Only the base file size counts. Version file size is not counted against the OneDrive quota. So don't worry about that part also. Anyway, so this is very useful in case there is a mistake. But now let's talk about another one. At this stage, I close this file, go to my mobile. I can not only see the file, I can open it, I can edit it, save it. My machine is off right now. So if you are offline and the file is edited somewhere else, when your device is online, it will sync automatically. That's the whole idea. So these are the benefits of OneDrive. So which are the benefits we are seeing now? So far we have seen which ones? We have seen auto version, auto sync, auto save and just I don't want to switch to mobile right now. So just trust me that will be available on all devices. But these are automatic benefits. You are not doing anything for it. Correct. Now, 
these benefits you are not going to get automatically. You have to do something about it. And what do you have to do? Well, now onwards, when you have a file on OneDrive and you want inputs from someone, stop sending it to them as attachment and share, start sharing a link. This is the single most important change in life you have to do. Yeah, so there is a question, what is the fill color green? Fill color white, just because there is a question, let me just emphasize. What does that really mean? I did explain it, but again. So, green tick mark means local and cloud synced. Stored locally, synced with cloud, done. This means only cloud, not local. This means it was on cloud and I have explicitly said always keep on this device. So unless I go to this file, right click on it and say uh, free up space, it will not get locally deleted. That is the difference. But for all practical purposes, green tick mark or white tick mark, local copy available can work offline in very simple terms. Now coming to send, because the moment you send, what is happening? You are making a copy and increasing your work and others work as well. So stop sending, start sharing. Now the moment I say that people have lots of worries. People say, no, we have security risk, this, that. Wait, before you say all that, forget security. For 30 years, people are sending attachments. What is the security for that? Nothing, right? I send a file to someone. They edit it, send it back to me. Okay. But that original file is still with them. They can do whatever they want. You will have no idea whatsoever. You are never right. You means not just you who are in the session. Nobody in the world has. Once the file goes, it's gone. What is there? Nothing new. But then, isn't it unsafe also? And inconvenient also? Both. That is why share a link. How do you share a link? Don't go to Outlook. Although we like it to go to Outlook and attach files, don't go to Outlook. I'll tell you why. You can do it from Outlook also, sharing a link, but that's more complex and confusing. So you say attach file, any file which is on OneDrive SharePoint Teams will have cloud icon. When you click on such a file, it will ask you this and this. And because you have no clear idea about why this is better for you and this is worse for you, most people click here. That's the problem. There is another problem. If I go to attach a file, so I am just creating a new mail. This is insert, attach file. You can see this file we just created. I say share a link. Okay, fine. But then what? Who will get access? So whoever I have put as CC, BCC2, those people will get access. Okay. What kind of access? That is the tricky part. That's actually written here. Anyone can view. Oh, that's not what I expected because the default of sharing is anyone can view. So this became an anonymous link. This is dangerous. By default, this should not happen. So here you have to go to extra permission and say recipients can either edit or view that you decide. But anyone can view is a wrong default. Of course, admin people should change it in OneDrive or rather SharePoint Admin Center, change the default to recipients, not anyone. But even if you know all this, this is extra effort. So confusion effort, why do you want? Better is to go to Word, Excel, PowerPoint itself and there is a share button, do it from here. And for the first time, you are in control. You decide the people. You can decide only to show the file to them. You can even block download. Absolutely no problem, which is very, very good. What does that mean? You are actually going to only show the file to them. Perfect for read-only data like reports, price lists, brochures, rules and regulations, where you don't want to send a copy because things and can keep changing, but you don't want to give read-write access. So this is very, very useful. Now I want to show you how to allow editing. So let's say allow editing and then apply and then put the names of people. 
So I'm going to put my colleague's name, Shesham. She's on the call. I'll also put one more user, that test user. And most important, the files which we attach and send, we don't just send to internal people, we send them to external parties like consultants, outsourced agencies, suppliers, distributors, customers. How do we send? By attachment. Attachments are unsafe and inconvenient and inefficient. So we should be able to send it to external parties as well. So at this stage, tell me in how many of your organization external sharing is enabled. Just type it in chat. I'll wait for a few seconds for you to answer. In your organization, is this allowed? Just say yes or no. Whatever you are typing, nobody else can see, so don't worry about it. Okay. So, idea is, please enable this feature because this is not only more productive, efficient, it is also more safe. And I'll explain why. Now, this three people I have shared with. First of all, you have to understand that once you start sharing, you are going to forget which file is shared with whom. So, how do you remember? You don't remember. You don't need to remember. You again go to the button and then what do you do? Well, you just say, we have not come here to share. We have come here to find out whom I have shared it with. So, you will see here and when you click on any one of them, it will actually show you this, 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 edit. Okay, I feel like removing someone's access, I can do that. I want to remove that complete link itself, I can do that then. Even if those people have the link, it will stop working. So, you are in control. So, you don't have to remember. Now, if you forget which file you have shared with whom, there is another way. You go to OneDrive. In OneDrive, you go to Shared and Shared by You. This will give you a list of all the items you have shared with people. And when you click on a file, click on a file and go to details, it will show you who has access. And same dialogue here where you can edit, change permission, remove links, all of that. Also, remember we have the file in file system. Remember our file, file system. So this file I want to share not in word, word is closed, no problem, right click here and click on which button, share button. So, depending on which version of uh, uh, Windows, the menu may be a little different, but basically what we are saying is share dialog is the same whichever place you click on. So, this is the share button in Windows 11, in Windows 10 there will be a simple share button. Either way, look at what is happening same dialog, whether you do it from word, from browser, from mobile, file explorer, Mac, doesn't matter, same dialog. So, learn this dialog well. Okay, so far so good. Now, we have shared the file. Let's see what happens on the other side. On the other side, I have this file open. I am editing this file already, but notice what happened. This is my colleague Shesham. She has got the link. She opened the file. She has not only opened it, I have the file also open. She did not get an error message. I am not typing here. She is typing. She is in another city, long, many, many kilometers away from me. Doesn't matter. I am using Word to edit. She is using browser to edit. Absolutely no problem. So, this is the benefit. How many copies of the file? One. How many people are editing? Two. Now, let's make this more complex. I also shared this file with my assistant. Let me log into assistant's mailbox. And of course, the file must have come. Let it refresh. This is the file. This looks like an attachment. There is no attachment whatsoever. Now, notice this person doesn't know who is editing. This person just came. But now, even this person is being informed that Nitin is also editing, Shesham is also editing, now three people are editing. So, just to show you how it works, right side different user, left side different user and there is a third user far away somewhere. So, now this is Nitin editing. Notice when I click, this guy knows where Nitin is editing, like that. It is all smooth. So, now wherever I go, 
is almost live update. No copy paste, no copies. Less time, more impact. That is called efficiency. If someone overwrites someone's thing, that's okay. We have previous versions also. Bottom line is better quality document you can create faster. Very, very powerful. So, did we come here together to do this editing together? No. Maybe some fourth person is editing it offline. No problem. And that person becomes online. Maybe all these three people have finished editing. You don't have to worry about all that. That's OneDrive's headache. OneDrive will manage the show and pull everyone changes, whether they are simultaneous or separate instances. It's still one file. That's the important thing. Now let's do one more thing. One more kind of sharing. Many people know this part, but there is another powerful way of sharing, which many people don't know. For example, I have cost. I have cost and I want my boss to look at the cost. I don't want boss to look at the whole document. Of course, I could have gone to share specific people and allow editing, allowed my boss and shared with my boss. Absolutely. I don't want to do that. Why? Can you think? If I do this, what will happen? What happened to this person? I shared a file. What did this person get a link? And this person clicked the file. The file opened. Which page opened? First page. I want boss only to look at the cost and cost is on which page? Cost is on some page 25. I don't want boss to waste time searching for it. So this is another way of sharing files. So I go there, wherever area of interest, select it, right click there and choose comment. Yes, comment is there in Word Excel PowerPoint, but this feature is new. Because it's on OneDrive, this is happening. So now I'm saying, boss, that's it. Now, who is this file shared with? Not with boss, don't worry. Word will understand that. It will say, this person doesn't have access to the file. Should I give access to this person? Yes, done. That's it. Now file is gone to boss, you don't have to worry. So how is it different? Can boss edit other parts of the file? Yes, absolutely. But there is a difference. We will see the difference. But before that, remember, earlier when I showed you, there were two or three versions, two versions, I think. Now look at the version history. Depending on how many people are editing, versions keep on getting added. You do not have to bother about it. That's the good part. All right, so far so good. Now, if and when boss receives the mail, let's see what happens. So let me refresh boss's mailbox now. And while that is happening, let me also show you one more thing. What is the other thing you should know about this? This share button, four options. Understand what the options are. This is anonymous link. Should not be the default, but let's say you are launching a new product. You want to send a brochure to all your customers. You have 2000 customers. You don't want to put their email ID. So you create an anonymous link. And if someone shares that brochure, it's good for you only. So that kind of thing you can do anonymous. Specific people has a very specific meaning. What is the meaning? That's very important to understand. So at this stage, assistant got that mail. Notice what happened in the mail. Very important. This link will work for direct recipients only. What does that mean? If this person intentionally wants to play mischief and forwards this through competitor of yours, the link will go. Link is just a link. But when that other person clicks on the link, it will not open because it requires the credentials of this person, not that person. That is the importance of using direct links, specific people. That is the idea. Understood? So now my boss also got a mail saying this file is shared, but look at the difference. When assistant got the mail, assistant got this file link, clicked on it, the entire file opened, first page. Boss got the same thing. Boss did does have a link, can click and open, but notice what is happening. Cost 43 million, one paragraph above, one paragraph below, all that is already there. 
Now, does boss have to open the file? No. If this is enough for boss, you can add a comment here. Where is this outlook on browser? Remember. Now, boss is saying, go ahead. Whatever it is, job done. And insert. Boss's job is done on email. End of story. Now, what will happen? You have sent a mail to boss. You are going to wait for reply and then think what to do. No, that is not required at all. Right? What have you done? You have put a comment here, no? For cost. See, this comment will get automatically refreshed. So, even if you go to another person who is editing this file right now, who is this person? Who is this person? Assistant. Now, I go to cost. I am searching for the same thing. Right? This is cost. This is who? Not even boss, not even me, assistant. That boss's comment has already got synced. Exactly the same thing works in PowerPoint and Excel also. Imagine the amount of time and energy you are going to save if everyone in your organization starts sharing files like this. So, I am going to take a quick pause and understand if there are any pending questions. So, these are the benefits, but what happens when I share a link to external party? That person does not require any Microsoft license, just browser and internet connection and whatever email ID obviously. Now, internal people, they clicked on it because they were already logged in. External person is not logging into my system, they just have email ID. So, they have to prove that they own that email ID. Extra layer of security. So, when that external party clicks on the link, a file will not open, which is good. You will get a dialogue saying, now it sounds stupid that the person knows the email ID. No, this could be a hacker who has picked up the link from somewhere. That person may not know. So, that is why. Now, that is not enough. Then this person will get a mail separately with the OTP. Sometimes it does go to spam. So, you inform your vendors or whoever and now only when that code is typed, it will work. This is extra level of security. Another benefit of this is if you send a file and make a mistake, you don't have to recall the file, send another copy because you are sending the link. You forgot anything, no problem, just change it. People can only see the latest version. Only the owner of the file can see older versions. Other people can only see the latest version. So, bottom line, whichever way you look at it, external sharing is better than attachments. For these reasons, none of these benefits are available for email attachments. Now, many people have a problem that they have some old arcane DLP and that DLP does not integrate with OneDrive. So, if you do not have a DLP, of course, you should get a DLP because information protection you must have. And if you have a vendor which DLP does not integrate with OneDrive, that is coming in the way. You should change that to some DLP which supports OneDrive, Teams, SharePoint, all of that because users are going to create files there. So, because of these reasons, encourage people to share as links, do not discourage or do not block. Few reasons, legal documents, pay slips, RFP documents, quotations, okay, send them as attachments. 10%, 90%, at least this is better now. So, that is what I mean. So, what is the standard operating procedure now? Stop sending attachments, start sending links. And this benefit does not stop here. Because when we are working with each other, files we interact with on email. But if it is urgent, we do not do email, we do chat. Now, when we go and do something similar in chat, what is going to happen? There are thousands of different applications you can use for chatting nowadays. Literally, there is a breed of lots of chat applications, most popular being Telegram, uh, WhatsApp, Telegram, Google, whatever. You can create a one-on-one -on -one chat or group chat. Problem is, if you go and use any of these chat applications and upload a file, and there are four people in that chat, Four people open the file. There are four copies of the file. What is the point? We are back to square one, inefficient. So, that is why Teams is different. 
when you go to Teams chat, Teams is the only software I know where it's chat. You can do one on one chat, one to many chat, all of that. So this is a chat with three people. Assistant created this chat and three other people are in the chat. Okay. Now I have uploaded a file. This file, these four people open. How many copies? The answer is one, not four. Why? Because when you upload a file in Teams chat, even if you upload it from local PC, it actually gets uploaded to that person's OneDrive and the other people in the chat are given edit permissions automatically. If I remove someone, the permission is also removed, so you don't have to worry. Now, if I want to see which files I have shared with people, maybe in a chat also, I don't remember, no problem. There is a files tab, here it will show you all the files, who has shared it, because it's a group chat. Other people may also share some files. So all the benefits of OneDrive we saw earlier are also applicable here. That is why OneDrive rule is now, what is the OneDrive rule? Standard operating procedure, this. Now, why did I say don't copy local files to OneDrive? That's also important to understand. So let's say I have a local file. Let's say I have a file somewhere on local drive. Then what happens? I have a local drive file and uh, this file I want to put on OneDrive. What will I do? I will just copy it to OneDrive. Don't do that because if I copy this file to OneDrive, notice what happens. This file is in my C colon temp. Now, what is the file name? Personal chat risk. Now, if I go to OneDrive, what will happen? There will be another file here called personal chat risk. This file is synced, but my temp folder file is a separate copy which is never going to get synced. And you may confuse yourself. Sometimes you edit this file, sometimes you edit this file, someone else edit the file, this one gets synced, that one gets confusing. So to avoid that, never copy local files to OneDrive or Teams or SharePoint, always move. Because even if you move, the sync process will give you a local copy, but that's a better version of your local copy. Don't maintain two local copies. That is what I mean. And one important thing to understand. Now, I have opened this file and I have made some changes. Okay, 59. And then I want to save this file and give send a proposal to someone else. Now, I did this. Now what happened? The changes which I did already got saved in the original file. So now when I say another customer proposal, yes, it will create a copy. Agreed. But what happened in the process? Whatever changes I did also went into the original file. This is very confusing sometimes initially. So please understand this. When without OneDrive, you open the original file, make changes, save as the changes only go into the new file. Original file is not changed. With OneDrive, you open the file, make changes, the changes are auto-saved. So at this stage, if you say, save as new name, the changes are there in the new file plus the old file. If you make a mistake, what do you do? Just go back to the original file, revert to one more version before. That's all. But remember to do this. So if you intend to open a file, and want to make changes and send it to someone else, save as, first save as and then make changes. That's all there is to it. So, simple and effective. All right, so that's about OneDrive and Teams chat. Now, many a times we have files to be shared in the context of meetings. Where do we store those files? So, remember, files, in the context of meetings ne are sometimes needed before the meeting, like you want to submit something for the meeting. Sometimes they are required for during the meeting, sometimes they are required after the meeting. All of those are available as a part of Teams. So if you use Teams, you get everything. So before the meeting, you go to the meeting, you can upload files there. During the meeting, all the participants can see the files, even those which are uploaded before the meeting. And after the meeting also, 
if you want to send minutes of meeting action items, some other files, collaterals, no problem. You still put it where? So two different things. So if I have a meeting request and uh, I am here in this meeting request and I want to upload a file, where do I go? So in Teams, you have a calendar, right? So if you go to Teams calendar and there is a meeting there, what is going to happen? In that meeting, before the meeting, you can upload files. How do you do that? If you go to a calendar and uh, look at the calendar entry, you will see an option called chat with participants. And when you do that, some sort of chat will start. People are still not there, but it will start. And from there, you can start doing this. That is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is what? Other way of doing it is during the meeting, you can anyway upload files. And after the meeting, where does it go? Oh, meeting doesn't die in Teams. <laughs> when meeting is over, meeting does not die in Teams. It appears as chat. And even in that chat, you can upload files later. Also see all the existing files. So that is how you manage files in the context of meetings. They don't need to be sent as attachments. They need to be sent or uploaded here. That's it. This data essentially goes into shared mode. So that's another part. Now the part is about projects. These are files which you created, shared with people, either on chat or whatever. Fine. Now, one, when there is a project, what happens? A project has many people involved and then we have multiple departments a project plan and a lot of files are going to get executed. So this is not just a project I'm talking about. There are many places in day to day work where the same group of people are talking to each other in the context of what in the context of sorry, wrong slide. Same people are doing something on a long term basis. Simple example is a review. Every department has a review, same people are involved. Every month there is a review. So same people, long term objective. Lot of discussion happens before, during, after. Lot of files get created, action items get created and meetings happen. So whenever this combination is there, where is all this happening? Again in email with attachments. We have to stop that. So whenever this kind of common problem happens, please create teams. Do not create group chat. Please create teams. How do you create teams? And when do you create teams? So let's see when do you create teams? When there is a project, you create a team. Easy. But even if there is no project, still you can create teams. So what are the situations where you will need to do that? Well, like I said, reviews, shared task list, common data entry, departmental shares, whatever you have on file share or SharePoint, just convert that to teams group mailboxes, recurring meetings. The moment you are creating a recurring meeting means you are asking for trouble. Recurring meeting, same participants, multiple times, multiple files, multiple meetings, multiple action points. Please do not do it on email. Create a team in Teams. Now, when you create a team in Teams, how do you do that? Very simple. Please don't block it. This is going to improve efficiency. So please encourage it. Create a team, add people to it. Do not create a group chat. So when you create a team, I have already created some, you can add members to it at the time of creating later, anytime. So when people are added as members, what do they get? Well, they get access to what? They get access to everything which is in the team. So to owners and guests, different types, owner, member and guest. Owner means the person who created the team. Other people can also be made owners. Member means another person from your organization and there's a third category guest like that vendor at Gmail. If they're a part of the project, please add them here. It is not a security risk. It is better to add them here because otherwise you are sending files outside inefficiency plus unsafe. So encourage this. Now what happens when I create this, I am stopping to use email for project management or re recurring tasks or reviews. I have a team 
called monthly review and then every month i want to keep separate discussion so i create channels so each project is separate within each project each topic is separate life is good so these are called channels you can create as many channels as you want so in procurement for every rfp there is a channel in monthly review for every meeting there is a channel for events there is a completely different structure whatever you need do it that is what i mean and all this now you create team add people create channels every person has read write access to everything in every channel unless you create a private channel now what do we do here we discuss that's fine but files these are files which are specifically for this project now you have two options you either have the file already or you are going to create a new one remember if you already have the file what are you going to do you say upload local file no? so upload delete the local file after upload because now this file is not going to get synced by default i'll tell you how to sync one drive file get it sync by default teams file you have to explicitly sync but never mind it is there in the cloud don't keep a local copy so move it here if it is a new file you can create it directly from here word excel powerpoint one note forms with you here all the things which i showed you are available here simple and effective so when you create a file here everyone will have read write access don't worry about who changes what and all that it's team no you added them to team because they are a part of a project so don't worry about that part and then of course all the benefits of one drive are still there plus extra benefit of teams what is extra benefit of teams you put a file here you do not have to go to share and remember all team members name whoever is currently team member automatically gets access so easier for you equally important if i remove some member then what happens they will stop having access to anything in that team so security wise also better so best of both worlds now only thing is how to sync files which are in teams by default they do not sync so remember each team is can have channel now this particular sync thing must be done from the general channel for a reason so go to general channel go to files there will be a sync button do not click on it click on documents because all these are basically a sharepoint site and these are folders in the document library so if you just say general only one folder will get synced these will not so don't click on general above general documents now you will see all the other folders now you say sync for syncing no special software is required it still uses one drive system but these files will not be visible to you in one drive okay it will be accessible to you on your drive okay so once it comes down to local drive what will happen local drive will not show one drive your company name it will show you a separate folder with your company name and there you can see whatever you have synced here and notice by default they are cloud files so no local space is getting occupied only the files you need you can double click and those will get downloaded best of both worlds this is the reason i am saying your departmental shares should become teams it becomes so much easy for people to work on departmental shares this cannot happen on a server share that is why people working from home send a mail to themselves edit the file and then do all sorts of jugglery stop doing that start using this sync as well so that is how you manage all kinds of scenarios of file management there is another very powerful method which has been recently introduced which is called loop i can't show you a demo for it because i am on microsoft tenant right now but many places where we actually have teams or email communication basically we are asking some question and getting some answers so loop allows you to create things like checklists tables and so on in chat in a group chat and people can directly edit it that feature has not yet come on browser it's only available on 
the full version of full version of full version of desktop version of teams right now i am in microsoft tenant so i cannot show you the demo but just look at this so let me actually try to show you so this is teams chat on my desktop and what am i doing i am having something here this is called loop so i want something from someone what do i do i create a table and i put something whatever i want i can put and whoever is in this will be able to edit the same table at the same time so it's like a part of a document whatever we saw simultaneous editing of document now is happening for a component of a document what are the components available here well we can have a bulleted list checklist numbered list paragraph table task list and whoever is a part of this can update it the automatic versioning audit trail all of that so components of documents are now available which means unnecessary creation of documents themselves can be simplified that is what i mean by loop it's coming very soon to mobile browser everywhere so now the one entire part is what do you do about the security the best way to manage security of all files and this is a very common question i get i have put files in teams but this particular file i don't want to show to one particular team member for whatever reason now is it possible technically yes how do you do that well you will have to go here say open in sharepoint then the same document library will open in sharepoint same files will be shown because teams is sharepoint now here i have to go open this go to manage access and this kind of security control is difficult to understand every user may not have rights to do it also and even if you have the rights you will soon forget what is that you have given which specific permission to which specific user in which specific team so this is a bad way of managing visibility of files files visibility currently we are trying to manage at the level of the container container means whether it is teams one drive sharepoint they are not files they are keeping files for you a better way to do that is to make the file secure that is called information protection what do i mean by that well information protection means if this file is confidential and i want to make sure this file can protect itself what do i do i create sensitivity labels so if i want to make sure this file can only be opened by my company official people official staff i just do this the moment i do this it will automatically encrypt it it will automatically put a label and all that depending on how i have configured it and what a mark all that is configurable and then only my staff can see it i have another label called top secret now that also has its own method of handling it you see i got a header called top secret i got a watermark called confidential and top secret means only the person who applied that level and my top management means board of directors ceo and direct reports only can see it now i don't care whether this file is in my one drive some random team someone copied it on usb and gave it to someone else i really don't have to worry because the file is protecting itself and how do you do this by data classification so you define data classification and then you create policies for information protection so the policies which i showed you are a part of microsoft 365 information protection this can happen automatically for example you have a confidential project and the project name appears in any file it should be automatically encrypted and protected that also can happen what i showed you is the manual way so these are the places where i defined it so what is customer confidential i want to see no problem i can see edit this and see what it means customer confidential file email it will be automatically applied then which group i have defined which sites i have defined and under certain circumstances it can auto label as well 
So this is the best form of data protection. Data protects itself. This works with email, Microsoft files and PDF files. So that is information protection. The another kind of protection is I define some confidential terminology that's called data classification and internally people can discuss it should not go out. That is called data loss prevention. That is also possible. You define sensitive information types like customer IDs, whatever you have, special information types. Microsoft gives you 600 to choose from also. And now you say if this credit card number appears more than thrice, then you can discuss it internally, but it cannot go as email, it cannot go as chat, it cannot go as file, copy paste from mobile teams to WhatsApp, all of that you can prevent using data loss prevention. So that's another part of the story. Same sensitive labels, you create policies and then those policies can then be enforced. So what kind of policies are we talking about and where can it protect? I will quickly show you and then we will summarize and then end the session. So this data loss prevention means where and what. So where is what I am about to show you right now. Where does this apply? Where does this apply? Across the board. As I said, Exchange, SharePoint, which includes Teams, OneDrive, Teams Chat also, all devices, if you have Endpoint Manager integrated, Microsoft Cloud App Security, what does that mean? Your users may be using Salesforce, they may be using some AWS, they may be using Google Cloud, they may be using SurveyMonkey. Even there, if the confidential data is going, that will be blocked. That is like a cloud firewall. And if you have integrated it properly, then on-premises repositories also can be a part of it. So this is how DLP works and it works across everything. And from mobile device protection point of view, very many people are worried about people copy pasting a corporate file and putting it in one uh, uh, telegram or WhatsApp or something like that. That also you don't have to worry. Endpoint Manager gives mobile application management where you can block corporate app data to be copied to non-corporate apps. That is called mobile application management. Endpoint Manager is the tool. All this is a part of Microsoft 365 and it beautifully integrates with everything. Many DLP solutions don't even understand chat. Forget about doing this properly. Why does that happen? Because security people don't understand how end users work on a daily basis. All users work on Microsoft platform. Security providers don't understand that part. And that's why despite wasting money, you're not getting full benefit. That is why you should look at Microsoft, not just for productivity, but also security and compliance. In fact, if you have any version, any license of Office 365, Business Premium, E1, E3, F3, M, uh, whatever, E5, Academic, you will see these three scores. These three are very important scores. If you have not seen them, please go and see. These tell you how good your security is, how good your compliance is, and how good your efficiency is in the context of whatever data you have on Microsoft Cloud. It doesn't just give you a number. It tells you why and what to do to improve the score. You can prioritize that and then that will improve all these three together without hampering each other. That is the benefit of Microsoft platform and files are integral part of it. And that's what we have covered in today's session. So what is the best practice? I have already covered many SOPs, but just to summarize, stop sending attachments, start sending links. That's number one. Stop doing post meeting collaboration on email, move it to team chat because team chat has all these benefits and behind the scenes, everything has sensitivity labels, audit trail, DLP, archival, retention. So if people want to do something urgently, they don't have to use personal chat. They can use team chat because it's convenient plus secure. So that in a nutshell is what I wanted to cover. You should try it out. 
show this demo, show this video to your bosses and make it a standard operating procedure and make sure bosses send the mail to everyone saying from tomorrow onwards, this is the way our, we are going to improve file management or meetings or whatever that is. So convert it to standard operating procedures and with top management help, make everyone more efficient. So with that, we will end the session. I'm sure you would like to learn more. So subscribe and click the bell icon and share it with your friends, colleagues and loved ones. That's it for now. Thank you.